You're most welcome today to this fourth <laughs> Sunday after Trinity, the 27th of June, uh, to our service of Holy Communion. Whether you're joining us here in person in the building of St. Mary's Turnorler, or joining us online in the various formats, or on the telephone, you're most welcome. And for those of you who are at home, uh, during the distribution of communion, we'll be playing the Gaelic or Irish blessing, a chance for you to reflect and pray while we here in the building will be receiving. Uh, for you at home and for here in person, just a few things to let you know that are happening. Um, we'll be reviewing the um, Stranoller and Kiltee Vogue register. So if you know people who need to go on to that or come off that, please let the relevant secretaries know uh, because we will be soon, God willing, hopefully having our Easter vestries. Now I know it's well after Easter, but due to COVID restrictions, we've had to wait. Coming up very soon, from the uh, 8th to Sunday the 11th of July, will be new wine. And as with many things, it'll be happening digitally. But we hope to watch it with due COVID distancing here in the church in Stranola. So if you'd like to be part of that, it'll be 6.30 each evening, beginning on Thursday the 8th. So as I said, you're most welcome. So let's pause and be still from the week that's been. Perhaps you've had a busy week, perhaps you've had a quiet week, but we come into God's presence and we still ourselves to give him the time that he is due, the worth, the worship he is due. The Lord be with you and also, and also with you. And we begin by saying together the collect of purity as before, all your parts are in yellow type. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Here at our Lord Jesus Christ says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. And that's from Matthew's gospel. Lord, have mercy on us and write these, your laws, in our hearts. So then as we come before God, we begin and put ourselves in a right order with him. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. Let us return to the Lord our God and we say to him, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon, deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We come to our first hymn. Lord Shireen, will you please stand? <clears throat> and our second hymn will be Amazing Grace, as it was last week. Can I encourage you to sing then with your hands when you get to Amazing Grace?
song that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I found was for joining in that. It's a chance for us to sing, if not audibly, but as some of our people we may know who are deaf, chance to sing with our hands. That is British Sign Language. Unfortunately, I don't have a version for that in Irish Sign Language. The prayer for today. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal and lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this heavenly Father for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who's alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm, Psalm 30, for those of you here in the building, it's on your reading sheet at home. You might like to turn to it later in your Bibles. We'll just be reading it directly through. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you've lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you restore me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restore my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endures but the twinkly of an eye, his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I feel secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with you, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will your dust praise you, or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O oh Lord, be my helper. You've turned my wailing into dancing and have put my, off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore my heart sings to you without ceasing. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, thanks to, be God. to God. The Lord is good to those who fear him. Amen. We remain standing for our gospel here, the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark, beginning chapter 5, beginning at verse 21. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the lake. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, 
And when he saw him, fell at his feet and begging him repeatedly, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So we went with him and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She'd heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhaging stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that the power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he'd entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talithi come, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He secretly ordered them that no one should know about this, should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Now, in a moment, we've got something very special for you. It took a little while of getting together. We have a short video from my friend, Reverend Canon Fanwell Mungongo from Dodoma in Tanzania. Uh, Fanwell will explain a little bit more at the moment. Um, and you have a picture there of Tanzania with Congo on one side, Kenya to the north, and Malawi and Zimbabwe to the south, and to the east is um, the Indian Ocean. I'd like to say a huge thank you to John because technology is a bit scarce in Tanzania and so they did their very best, but the vision wasn't great. We did improve it a little and the sound took a little bit of tidying up and John very kindly put a lot of effort into putting the subtitles. So I now hand over to my friend, Reverend Fanwell. My name, hello. My name is Reverend Canon Fanwell Mungongo working with the Anglican Church of Tanzania in the Diocese of Central Tanganyika. Until August last year, I was working both as a priest as well as a theological lecturer at the Diocese of Central Tanganyika Msalato Theological College here in Dodoma, in the capital a city of uh, Tanzania. But uh, from the 1st of uh, September, I was officially retired and I continue to teach at Musalato Theological College on a part-time basis. A friend, the Reverend Adam Pullen from uh, Ireland, whom we met in the year 2004 while students at uh, St. John's Theological College in Nottingham when we were doing our Master of Arts in the Theology of Mission and Ministry. We became friends and we have remained friends ever since. He asked me to make this video clip as a testimony of what uh, is happening in the mission of the church here in Tanzania. We had planned that he visit me this year as well, 
but COVID-19 has prevented that from happening. And talking about COVID-19, COVID-19 is a universal problem. It is a pandemic. And last year, I was among the victims of COVID-19 when I went down into my home area is in the Southern Highlands of Tanzania. And on my way back, I, uh, I had to stop in Iringa, where I was diagnosed as uh, being COVID-19 positive about 42 days. 14 days of those I spent in a hospital. And out of the 14 days, I was on a, an oxygen and, uh, concentrator because my oxygen levels had dropped down to 40. But many people across the world, including Adam and some friends um, in Ireland and in England, prayed for me so hard, rescued me from the problem. And here today, I sit before you to share my experience. The, thing which strengthened me during my time of illness was a verse from the psalm, Psalm 49, which assured me that I was not going to die, but I was going to live in order to testify to the mighty works of the Lord, our God. And here, that's what I'm doing. COVID-19 has been a problem in this country since around March last year. The first two or three months, it was uh, serious, but our late president, the president uh, uh, John Pombe Magufuli, called the whole country, people from all religions, to go into three days of serious prayer and fa fasting and prayer. And that's what we did. And the Lord God heard our cry. And we have not suffered from COVID-19 as badly as our neighbors have. So the country never went into a lockdown, but religious organizations, including the church, encouraged their believers to pray. But while praying, and instead of having two or one service, we ended up many big churches having three or four services in one day. And uh, that caused many people to lose interest in attending church. So numbers dwindled, giving dwindled, and people started uh, worshiping at home. Unlike you, my friends in the West, many people don't have this uh, technological advancement equipment. So some would watch um, services on television or listen on radios, and uh, the country never went on a serious lockdown, and we have survived up to now. But currently, recognizing that uh, there may be a new wave of um, COVID-19, uh, our new president, uh, Honorable Mrs. Samia Sulu Hassan, uh, is encouraging us to go back to observing different hygienic rules like hand washing, eucalyptic soap and running water, and use of masks as well as sanitizers. And that's what we are going back to doing. So may I invite you brothers and sisters, to pray for us because of uh, the poverty levels, poverty levels in this country, many people still continue to struggle. So pray that God may still be in control even during this new wave of COVID-19, as well as pray for our college, and Salato Theological College, which has suffered a collapse in new admissions because students cannot afford 
contributions for their theological training. And uh, for most of the time, we rely on uh, support from our overseas friends who are also struggling. So pray that the college may still receive new, young, committed Christians who want to train uh, for ministry. Pray for the people in the rural areas that they may remain safe under the protection of God from COVID-19. And pray for me, a retiring or retired clergy. Thank you, and you remain in our prayers. And uh, my friend Adam has always remained in my prayers, and I know he has encouraged you to pray for me as well. God bless you, and bye-bye. So there we have a flavor of what is the challenges that people face in the global south in Tanzania and sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and it's not been easy for us, but it's even more difficult for where resources, medical and, and material and others, are much more scarce than here. So just let me continue with a prayer. I pray, Lord, that as we come to your word, you give us ears to hear, eyes to see and hearts to respond, and that you would transform any fear we may have into faith and faith over fear. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm reminded of both what Afanwil has shared with us there and the Jarius and the woman had so little and yet they had so much faith. And we here in the West have so many things, but we seem to have so little faith at times. So the readings for today, I didn't choose them. As you can, if you have the reading sheets, you'll notice that they are the reading set for today but they resonate very much with the message that Fanwell shared with us, how in the darkest of days, because Aringa is quite some distance from where he lives in Dodoma, about six or seven hours by bus. So he's away from his family when he was in the hospital and they couldn't get to him. And yet through prayer, he had confidence in the Lord. I'm reminded of a couple of weeks ago, the mustard seed and Matthew said, or in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus said, I said, I should say, very truly I tell you that if I have this faith, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you should say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. I pray that we would have a faith as small as a mustard seed to move mountains. So we have two stories. Mark very much draws our attention to this so we can compare and contrast one to the other. First, with Jarius, the leader of the synagogue. Now, if you think in our society, perhaps even in the Church of Ireland, we have a certain way of behaving and we conduct ourselves in a certain way and we're all very polite, even more so in the situation that Jarius would have faced himself in. It was expected how one would conduct oneself in public, one wouldn't make a fuss, one wouldn't make a um, commotion. And yet there is Jarius running to Jesus and falling at his knees and pleading him at, to him. And similarly, if you remember the story of the prodigal son and the father running to the son and throwing his arms around the son, that was not expected or normal behavior for a Jewish man of high status or of recognition. Yet the fear for his daughter and his, most especially his faith in Jesus for his daughter overcome the fear of what others might have thought, seen, or said. In a similar way, perhaps even more so, the woman who had been bleeding. Remember, it's a woman who's bleeding, so it's, we're given the inclination that it's a woman's problem as opposed to a man. And she's been bleeding for many years. And you see there that she has been to the doctors and she's not got any better. Indeed, she's got worse. And the other thing we need to remember, of course, Jewish understanding and tradition, it may be different from our perspective, but her perspective, remember, was that by the fact that she was bleeding and how she was bleeding, she was unclean. And anyone she touched or who touched her was deemed unclean. So she would have been very nervous of being in a crowd, being pressed upon, and yet her faith in that Jesus would be heal her and make her well, helped her to overcome not just her fear, 
of tradition, expectation, and under religious understanding. And the other thing that perhaps we don't recognize, and I noticed when I was reading a bit of the background, you'll notice that Jewish Orthodox men tend to wear a cloak or a coat with tassels on it. And it was one of those tassels that she touched. So in a sense, it'd be kind of like if she touched my stole. It wasn't just she touched her clothes, he she touched something that symbolizes Jesus as a good, clean Jewish man. And Jesus could have been expected to react to her quite sternly, <laughs> but he didn't. He said, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace, you are healed. So Jesus be sees beyond the expectations, sees beyond the understandings of the time, and sees beyond how everyone would have expected him to react. And he heals her and recognizes her faith. I think sometimes because we look at this with Western eyes or with 21st century eyes, we recognize how far a leap of faith literally that lady made and how far Jesus reached out to her and went beyond and challenged also the understanding of the faith that they had then and I think now. And similarly with Jarius as well. He goes with Jarius back to the house and on his way there they say she has died. She may have died or she may just have passed into a coma, but she certainly was very, very ill. And with the medical ability at the time, there was little hope. Yet Jesus said she is not dead. You might have noticed that they said there was wailing and weeping. When somebody dies, professional mourners would come to the house and begin wailing and weeping to help the family let out their emotions. So it was, for the most part, a good thing. But Jesus said, stop all this commotion. He took her parents and the three disciples and went to her room and said, Talitha, come. There's only two occasions that Jesus' actual words in Aramaic, his day-to-day -day language, were mentioned. The other one is on the cross. And it's likely that Peter remembered this phrase and shared it with Mark, who shares it with us. Because such was the power of that scene in that room with that girl on that bed. That Jesus, uh, Peter remembered those very words of Jesus. She got up and she was given something to eat. And the faith and courage of Jarius, do not worry about what others would have thought him running to Jesus and not to be put off when there was little hope at first sight. So the faith of those people challenges us in our faith. How would we have responded? I hope and pray that we would have the faith as mustard seed and more, a faith in God, a faith in prayer, because both of them were prayers, and faith in God's goodness and gracious and kindness. Or would we be people of fear, fear of others or what others might say, think or do. Fear of traditions, not necessarily bad, but if the traditions prevent us from approaching God and from being open to God, then they are not helpful. Our fear of the expectations of others and society around. Which is it we fall down, fall into? I pray that we would be people of faith, people of faith in God as Fanua was when we think of that hymn, Amazing Grace. The slave trader there, John Newton, was challenged and put a faith in God in the storm. He prayed out to God in the storm. He recognized God's goodness. May we prayerfully reflect upon God and reflect upon his goodness, his, his connection with us, and that he is a good, good God. In Jesus' name, amen. So we come now to what we do most Sundays as we affirm our faith. And may this be a chance for us today to say I choose faith over fear and I choose God and his ways and his truth and his life in my life and in my life in this world that we live in. Please stand and I encourage you to say this faithfully together. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he came to to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated again as we come to time of prayer. Thank you, Elsie. Let us pray. Everlasting God, as we gather together in love and fellowship, hear us now as we bring before you our prayers concerning your church, our needs, and the needs of others. We pray for your church throughout the world, for Christians everywhere meeting in churches or online in their own homes. Grant that we and all your people may worship you in gratitude and be built up on our faith by demonstrating in the way we live our lives the love we find in Jesus. Today, in the worldwide cycle of prayer, we bring before God the United Church of Pakistan, who face the constant threat of terrorist attacks from Muslim extremists while existing alongside a strong Muslim religious community. We pray for the Christian women within the church as they fight for the rights of those affected by gender-based violence and human trafficking within their country. We continue to pray for the Diocese of Derry and Raffoe, for Bishop Andrew and his ministry in these challenging times. We remember especially in our prayers the Youth and Children's Ministry. We pray for the appointment of a new diocesan youth officer. We pray for Mrs. Kirsty McCartney, the Diocesan Children's Ministry Officer. For all diocesan staff, diocesan and parish volunteers, young people, children, diocesan youth and children departments, and all the parishes safeguarding trust panels. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring to you in prayer, Reverend Canon Fanwell Mungongo, the Diocese of Central Tanganyika and the Anglican Church of Tanzania. Thank you, Lord, for Canon Fanwell's unwavering faith, which kept him strong to overcome fear during his illness from COVID-19. We pray for his ministry as a retired priest while continuing to work as a part-time theological lector in Mansalto College, Theological College, and as a mentor to theological students. We pray, Lord, that the college will get the financial support it needs to train up new students who cannot afford the fees. Lord, we ask that you will bless Canon Fanwell as he gradually steps down from ministry and grant that he will, in the near future, be granted the resources necessary to finish his retirement home. We pray for the people of Tanzania, their president and the government as they battle a new wave of COVID-19 and the many people struggling due to the effects of the pandemic, especially those living in rural areas. We pray, Lord, that you will remain in control of the situation and that adequate amount of, amounts of vaccines will be supplied quickly to protect the people from the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for Reverend Adam, the congregations of our combined parishes and all who are joining with us online. Generous God, the society we live in seeks instant availability for all its needs and wants. Forgive us, Lord, when we focus on what we lack rather than recognizing how blessed we are, ignoring the needs of others and failing to see how we could make a difference. Challenged by your kindness and generosity, open our eyes and our hearts to see the needs of others and to generously share from our abundance with those in need throughout the world. May our faith be planted and grow firmly in Christ and help us to reflect his goodness and concern to everyone we meet. 
We ask, Lord, that as we slowly emerge from the pandemic, may our community be surrounded by patience and understanding as we prepare to endeavor to find a way forward for the future of the church. And forgive us, Lord, for the times when we are apathetic or doubtful. As we prepare to receive Holy Communion in a few moments' time, Lord, may we be willing to commit to recommit our hearts and lives to Jesus and ask that you will fill us afresh today with your Spirit, that as we leave this place, we are able to share the message of your salvation faithfully as opportunity arises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustaining God, we pray for the earth, its many inhabitants and creatures competing for survival, for its resources and its abundant beauty. Challenge us to live out our good intentions in the fight against climate change. Grant us the grace to grow deeper in our respect and care for your creation. Merciful God, we pray for a world where there is much hatred, violence, injustice and selfishness, and a lust for power and retribution. We pray for a peaceful resolution to the unrest in the Middle East, especially in the Holy Land, in many African countries, and for countries where political domination can spill all too easily into violent process. We pray for innocent victims of conflict as they suffer at the cruel hands of their perpetrators. Bless those who work and mediate to bring forward peaceful settlements, often working in difficult and dangerous situations. Lord, sustain them in their efforts and strengthen them as they strive to bring peace into a broken world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for those whom we love, family, friends, and neighbors. We pray for them in all their situations, in their hopes, their fears, their problems, and their joys. But most of all, we thank you for each one of them and for what they mean to us. Strengthen the bonds of affection, respect, and care in all families. We pray in particular for families who due to the pandemic have come upon hard times financially, for those out of work and are struggling to pay bills while barely able to afford to cover the day-to-day -day necessities of living. We give thanks for the people who work to bring relief within government departments and charity agencies that offer financial and practical support to those in need within our communities. Help us to be kind, thoughtful, and loving to others, recognizing that the pandemic has been a struggle for most people, and in believing that you alone are the source of all life's provisions, make us generous and sharing so that we will draw closer to one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing Lord, in today's gospel, we learn about the tremendous faith of a sick woman. Help us to learn from her faith and that of Jairus, and that we should not fear, only believe, and that if we ask, it shall be given to us. We pray for all those we know who need to touch the hem of Jesus' garment and receive health and healing in their lives, especially those affected by cancer or other life-threatening conditions. We pray for all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, that they will be surrounded by your love and filled with your healing and be aware of the presence of your Holy Spirit with them, comforting and sustaining them. We pray for our hospital and primary care staff as they endeavor to deal with the backlog of patients' health concerns resulting from the pandemic, as well as having to regain their own physical and mental stress strength after such a long period in battling against COVID-19, which is still continuing, but to a more manageable and lesser extent. In a moment of silence, let us pray in the quietness of our hearts for all who we know who have need of your healing at this time.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Merciful God, we praise and thank you for welcoming into your presence all who have died trusting in you. Keep our hearts firmly fixed on Jesus, the Lord and giver of life, and bring us with the whole company of the redeemed of all time and every nation into your presence, where we shall forever live in the heavenly mansions you have prepared for those who have been redeemed by your death and resurrection. We pray for those who are in mourning following a recent death of a much-loved family member or friend. Comfort them in their sorrow. May they know the support of your love and compassion surrounding and sustaining them as they encounter each new day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, as we begin a new week, by your Spirit, take away our fear, strengthen our faith, and let us be amazed at what is possible with you in our lives. We conclude our prayers by saying together, Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We conclude this time of prayer. Thank you, Elsie, with the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 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 Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. If you forgive others their sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive you your sins. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Amen. While I prepare the communion table, we have our next hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels, all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image, male and female, you created us. And even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and your mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and to suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue perpetual memory of his precious death on the night on or his precious death until he comes again on the night he betrayed he took bread when he given thanks to you he broke it gave it to the disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after supper he took the cup and when he given thanks to you he gave it to them saying drink this all of you for this is my blood's new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death. We celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, Grant by the power of the life-giving Spirit, we may be one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. To the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Draw near with faith and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Remember that he died for you, and feed him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. So for those of you who are joining us online, telephone or on, on the net, uh, we will have the Gaelic blessing while we receive here in, in the building. And for those of you here in the building to receive, please come up together as a pew. Come to the first step of the chancel. I'll give you the bread into your hands and then take the little bit of wine and then drop it into the cup. And when you only remove your mask by one hoop when you come to this step and then put it back on once you've received. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be
Christ be with you. Christ be in you. Christ be behind you. Christ be for you. Christ be beside you. Christ be with you. Christ be behind you. Christ be in you. after communion. God of all compassion, by the dying and rising of your Christ, you restore us to yourself and unfold us in your love. May we who have been refreshed with the bread of life and the cup of salvation be renewed by your healing spirit and made ready for the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and those whom you love, care, and pray for. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. A reminder that it'll be on YouTube later in the day. Children's sheets are on the website for all the children. If anyone knows how to do, um, to do the sign language and Irish sign language would be a great help. Keep well, keep safe, and God bless. <laughs>